Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities. I do diagnostic evaluations, a little bit of intervention and advocacy for some families. I am also an adult with both dyslexia and dysgraphia. Hi, my name is Kim Sharman. I have worked with kids the last 15 years who have dyslexia, dysgraphia, and ADHD. And I'm familiar with and um, use a lot of the tools from a variety of different uh, dyslexia-based programs, Orton-Gilliam-based programs. And that's what we've talked about in the past is there's no one way of doing it. But today we want to talk about where do you get resources, right? Like what we don't want teachers to do is spend like three hours creating a 15-minute lesson. And you can get down the rabbit hole trying to find the words that you need for the lesson if you don't have good resources, right, Kim? Now, you and I both, when we started talking about this, both said this, hold up your copy, oh. <laughs> is an amazing resource. Why do you love this resource so much? The ABCs and all their tricks. This I use uh, with my older students more. It's a little more sophisticated. Um, Kids get very angry that there's many different spelling patterns in the English language. And this makes things a little more simplified in the sense that you can see just how many words um, are spelled in a particular manner. And well, that's why I like it. Well, the, what thing the I love too is it kind of gives you, it's like the encyclopedia of decoding right like here's here's why the c does what it does and what are the combinations thereof right like and then it's very I, logical yes and i can look at lots of information on c in all sorts of configurations and it gives me a great list of words if i were trying to um teach a particular sound or combination or concept and if i had a student that was struggling and i needed more practice and i needed to have another way to explain the rules this might be another great option now kim you have another thing that you love which is yeah. and you will find once you this is the uh slingerland uh word list of reference and i'm sure you can find this lots of places and i will tell you once you start familiarizing yourself with these um resources You'll see they all teach the same rules. They're in there. Um, they may call it something slightly different, but you'll start to recognize, ah, that is the double, you know, double F, double L, double S, double Z rule. Um, and so they all have them. This is very good for younger students. Lots of great words for younger students. All right, let's put that one down. And I'm going to show you. So I also went online to say where else could we find word lists so i actually ordered this um on amazon and so this particular volume was like 25 bucks and it has got some great word lists in it and they actually go in and define um elements and, and we're going to talk to you about the lfs z rule in a little bit but it's got examples it's got lots of words it's got the configurations of the different words like it's another great general resource okay but What's my favorite one, my favorite of all of them is angling this for words that's a book that i have carolyn bowen this is i use this all the time i can use it for younger kids and older kids this is a great resource of words because especially for the older kids who have memorized words you can get them with this because there are unfamiliar words. There's also a lot of um, what we call nonsense words that will test the knowledge of the student to see if they really have learned their vowel sounds or their rules. Okay, so you said get them. What do you mean by get them? Get them. Oh, get them. When I, I have students who have memorized language, um, a lot of people think that that's reading. Yes, we do memorize um, sight words, short words, but when it comes to complex multisyllable words, some kids you really have to find strange. Okay, check this one out. Hell grammite. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I, I do believe it's real, but I can guarantee you 99% of my students have never seen that word. So they can't memorize it. Okay. And the goal of giving them those words is to force them to decode it. 
to use the words, to use the knowledge of their syllable types and to use the knowledge of how to divide words into syllables. Right. So we want to teach, we want these, we, we have to challenge them by giving them words that they've never seen before mm -hmm. to force them to practice the skill set of dividing it into syllables, finding the vowel sound, decoding the syllable, remembering the syllable sounds, and then blending it back together in a word. But yep. typically, we would not give a first grader the word that you just showed, right? No, but you'll see in the very beginning, very simple, much simpler words. These words have multiple consonants before the vowel sound, but it, it has everything you need. Right. I, I mean, I love it. I okay. love it. So, so that's my favorite. Okay, then I also have one that I um, have used and it's called mm -hmm. Recipe for Reading. And it's very similar um, to the ABCs and all their tricks in that it gives you, uh, let me scroll forward. Hopefully I'm not making everybody nauseous by doing this. Um, it gives you a lot of information about the basics, but then it goes into how do we make it auditory visual kinesthetic? How do I see it, hear it, and do something with it, right? And then um, it explains the relationship. It also teaches you how to form the letters in a variety of configurations. And as we go along, the book will also begin to give you senses of ways to play with letters in different ways. So this is kind of a this class. Nice it gives you, for kids who have dysgraphia, and if you as a parent don't quite know how to teach them to do, to create their letters, there is a proper way. Yes, and dysgraphia is how do I get what's in my head down through my hand? And we'll talk about that in another session. Okay, um, I think the uh, couple others that we wanted to throw out really quickly, one that I love deeply is, explode the code now kim have you ever used explode the code i do this is this is the very really very very beginning book yeah. but, okay a so, long while back i used this yes yeah so the thing that i love about this particular curriculum and it's not horribly expensive um granted that's relative um it actually has controlled text so we have kids that are not ready to have kitchen in their reading vocabulary and we need to keep it super controlled like a couple of sight words and everything else is phonetically regular and we can sound it out right and it's got you know built lessons around which one makes the short vowel sound for you know is it alligator is it angler is it desk right so you're trying to find the picture with that and then find the same word so we're training that eye to really look at those phonemes okay we so that's another great cover? Thing. do you have the cover of that one for i do have the cover of explode oh there it is that's a good one okay and Nancy this is Paul, very and good. level one through level eight and they have one and 1.5 and two and 2.5 okay do you have another favorite book on that end um i do have my um just a second Sorry. <laughs> uh, you were not prepared for this particular one. I'm sending her digging to her shelf. Okay, here we go. Mega words. Okay. And I also, uh, mega so, words, another one of my favorites. What do you love about mega words? Mega words. Yeah, I, I love mega words too. And um, again, not as much for the little kids, but as you, for the bigger kids, it has, um, you know, this is something you could buy and actually assign little homework assignments and do them with your kids. And you're, it really does um, promote the learning of the comprehension and the decoding um, and the encoding. So I don't know, this this one is a good one too. Maybe, I don't know, Cindy, would not as much for the very beginning. It's not, it's not for ele early elementary, but Multi it's great for fourth and fifth graders, right? Yes, yes. It's, you know, you're learning like the different, ending so um the ending sounds yeah. and so i don't know so that's another when they give you more practice yeah all right so, so these are all these are all the resources we use on it on a regular basis so yeah. the thing that i the the recommendation i will put out to teachers is use bookstores are your best friend 
right? Like finding used bookstores and oftentimes you can get materials like this at a very affordable cost if you're a good hunter. And then yeah, on the internet, you can find these used yeah. too. Um, and often getting a, a good tool like this is not, you know, a, a three or $400 investment. It's a 15 to $25 investment that really right. gives you some amazing resources and don't hesitate to share with other members in your group. And with that, we will see you on our next session. Bye. Bye.